Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Wings and Ruin, written by Sarah J. Moss, read by yours truly, Free Water, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Last time, we actually finally had a shorter chapter, and I think this one's fairly short, too. We were learning a little bit more about the prison again. Uh, not necessarily just the prison that we went to for the Bone Carver. Uh, we're attempting to get the Bone Carver on our side. But Amran doesn't seem to be... She know, she doesn't know that we're doing it yet. You know, you know our little squad's trying to get the Bone Carver. But Amran's like, yo, don't. Don't get anyone in there. Don't talk to anyone in there. They all stink. So we'll see in chapter 22. They listen to her advice. I felt Rise's attention on me while we dressed the next morning and throughout our hearty breakfast. Yet, he didn't push, didn't demand to know what had dragged me into that screaming hell. It had been a long while since those nightmares had hauled either of us from sleep, blurred the lines. It was only when we stood in the foyer, waiting for Cassian before we winnowed to the prison, that Rise asked from where he leaned against the stair banister. Do you need to talk about it? My Illyrian leathers groaned as I turned toward him. Rice clarified. With me. Or anyone. I answered him truthfully, tugging at the end of my braid. With everything bearing down on us. Everything at stake. I let my braid drop. I don't know. I think it's torn open some part of me that was slowly repairing. Repairing thanks to the both of us. He nodded, no fear or reproach in his eyes. So I told him, all of it, stumbling over the parts that still made me ill. He only listened. And when I was done, that shakiness remained, but speaking it, voicing it aloud to him, the savage grip of those terrors lightened, cleared away like dew in the sun. I freed a long breath, as if blowing those fears from me letting my whole body loosen in its wake. Rise silently pushed off the banister and kissed me. Once. Twice. Cassian stalked through the front door, a heartbeat later and groaned that it was too early to stomach the sight of us kissing. My mate only snarled at him before he took us both by the hand and winnowed us to the prison. Rise gripped my fingers tighter than usual as the wind ripped around us. Cassian now wisely keeping silent. And as we emerged from that black, tumbling wind, Rise leaned over to kiss me a third time. Sweet, soft, before the gray light and roaring wind greeted us. Apparently, the prison was cold and misty no matter the time of year. Standing at the base of the mossy, rocky mountain under the prison which it was built, Cassian and I frowned up the slope. Despite the Illyrian leathers, the chill seeped into my bones. I rubbed at my arms, lifting my brows at Rise, who had remained in his usual attire. So out of place in this damp, windy speck of green in the middle of the gray sea. The wind ruffled his black hair as he surveyed us, Cassian already sizing up the mountain like some opponent. Twin Illyrian blades were crossed over the general's muscled back. When you're in there... Rise said, the words barely audible over the wind and silver streams running down the mountainside. You won't be able to reach me. Why? I rubbed my already freezing hands together before puffing a hot breath into the cradle of my palms. Wards and spells far older than Prithian, was all Rise said. He jerked his chin to Cassian. Don't let each other out of your sight. It was the dead seriousness with which Rise spoke that kept me from retorting. Indeed, my, my mate's eyes were hard, unflinching. While we were here, he and Azrael were to discuss what he'd found out about the Autumn's leanings in this war, and then adjust their strategy for the meeting with the High Lords. But I could sense it, the urge to request he join us, watch over us. Shout down the bond when you're out again, Rice said with a mildness that didn't reach his gaze. Cassian looked back over his shoulder. 
Get back to Valaris, you mother hen. We'll be fine. Rise leveled another uncharacteristically hard stare at him. Remember, put you here, Cassian. Cassian just tucked in his wings, as if every muscle shifted toward battle, steady and solid as the mountain we were about to climb. With a wink at me, Rise vanished. Cassian checked the buckles on his swords and motioned me to start the long trek up the hill. My gut tightened at the climb ahead, the shrieking hollowness of this place. Who did you put in here? The mossy earth cushioned my steps. Cassian put a scarf-like finger to his lips. Best left for another time. Right. I fell into step beside him, my thighs burning with the steep hike. Mist chilled my face. Conserving his strength, Cassian wasn't wasting a drop of energy on shielding us from the elements. You really think unleashing the carver will do the trick against Highburn? You're the general, I panted. You tell me. Apologies, that was Cassian. He considered the wind tossing his hair dark over his tan face. Even if you promise to find a way to send him back to his own world with the book, or give him whatever unholy thing he wants, Cassian mused. I think you'd better find a way to control him in this world, or else we'll be fighting enemies on all fronts. And I know which one will hand our asses to us. The Carver's that bad. You're asking this right before we're about to meet him? I hissed. I assumed Ryze would have put his foot down if it was that risky. Ryze has been known to hatch plans that make my heart stop dead, Cassian grumbled. So I wouldn't count on him to be the voice of reason. I scowled at Cassian, earning a wolfish grin in return. But Cassian scanned the heavy gray sky as if hunting for spying eyes. Then the moss and grass and rocks beneath our boots were listening ears below. There was life here, he said, answering my question at last before the High Lords took Prithian. Old gods, we call them. They ruled the forests and the rivers and the mountains. Some were those things. Then the magic shifted to the High Fae, who brought the cauldron and mother along with them. And though the old gods were still worshipped by a select few, most people forgot them. I grappled onto a large gray rock as I climbed over it. The bone carver was an old god? He dragged a hand through his hair, the siphon gleaming in the watery light. That's what legend says along with whispers of being able to fell hundreds of soldiers with one breath. A chill rippled down my skin that had nothing to do with the brisk wind. Useful on a battlefield. Cassian's golden brown skin paled with his eyes churned with the thought. Not without the proper precautions. Not without him being bound to obey us within an inch of his life. Which I'd have to figure out as well, I supposed. How did he wind up here? In the prison? I don't know. No one does. Cassian helped me over a boulder, his hand gripping mine tightly. But how do you plan on freeing him from the prison? I winced. I suppose our friend would know, since she got out. Careful. We had to be careful when mentioning Amran's name here. Cassian's face grew solemn. She doesn't talk about how she did it, Vyra. I'd be careful how you push her. Since we still had not told Amran where we were today, what we were doing. I thought about saying more, but ahead, far up the slope, the massive bone gates opened. I'd forgotten it. The weight of the air inside the prison. Like wading through the unstirred air of a tomb. Like stealing a breath from the open mouth of a skull. We both bore an Illyrian blade in one hand. The fey light bobbing ahead to show the way, occasionally dancing and sliding along the shining metal. Our other hands. Cassian clenched my fingers as tightly as I clutched his while we descended into the eternal blackness of the prison. Our steps crunching on the dry ground. There were no doors. None that we could see. But behind the solid black rock, I could still feel them. Could have sworn a faint scratching sound filled the passage. From the other side of that rock. As if someone were running their nails down it. Something huge. Old. And quiet as the wind through a field of wheat. Cassian kept utterly silent. 
tracking something, counting something. This could be a very bad idea, I admitted, my grip tightening on his hand. Oh, it most certainly is, Cassian said with a faint smile as we continued down and down into the heavy black and thrumming silence. But this is war. We don't have the luxury of good ideas, only picking between the bad ones. The bone carver's cell door swung open the moment I laid my palm to it. Worth the misery of being Ryza's mate, Cassian quipped as the white bone swung away into the darkness. A light chuckle within. The amusement faded from Cassian's face at the sound as we walked into the cell, still hand in hand. The orb of Faylight bobbed ahead, illuminating the stone-hewn cell. Cassian growled at what it revealed. Who revealed? Wholly different, no doubt, from the same young boy who now smiled at me. Dark-haired, with eyes of crushing blue. I started at the child's face, what I had not noticed that first time. What I had not understood. It was Ryson's face. Coloring, the eyes, it was my mate's face. But the carver's full, wide mouth curled into that hideous smile. That was my mouth. My father's mouth. The hair on my arms rose. The carver inclined his head in greeting, in greeting and in confirmation, as if he knew precisely what I realized, who I had seen and was still seeing. The High Lord's son. My son. Our son. Should we survive long enough to bear him? Should I not fail my task to recruit the carver? Should we not fail to unify the High Lords in the Court of Nightmares and keep that wall intact? It was an effort to keep my knees from buckling. Cassian's face was pale enough that I knew whatever he was seeing, it wasn't a beautiful young boy. I was wondering when you'd return, the carver said, that boy's view voice sweet and yet dreadful, from the ancient creature that lurked beneath it. Hi, lady. He added to me, please accept my congratulations on your union. A glance at Cassian. I can smell the wind on you. Another little smile. Have you brought me a gift? I reached into the pocket of my jacket and chucked a small shard of bone, no bigger than my hand, at the carver's feet. This is all that's left of the Ator after I splattered him on the streets of Alaris. Those blue eyes flared with unholy delight. I hadn't even known we'd kept this fragment. It had been stored until now, precisely for this sort of thing. So bloodthirsty, my new high lady. The carver purred, picking up the cracked bone and turning it over in those small, delicate hands. And then the carver said, I smell my sister on you, curse breaker. My mouth went dry. His sister. Did you steal from her? Did she weave a thread of your life into her loom? The weaver of the wood. My heart thundered. No breathing could steady it. Cassian's hand tightened around mine. The carver purred to Cassian. If I tell you a secret, or your heart, what will you give me? Neither of us spoke. Carefully. We'd have to phrase and do this carefully. The carver stroked the shard of bone in his palm, attention fixed upon a stone-faced Cassian. What if I tell you what the rock in darkness and sea beyond whispered to me, Lord of Bloodshed? How they shuddered in fear on that island across the sea. How they trembled when she emerged. She took something, something precious. She ripped it out with her teeth. Cassian's golden brown face had drained of color, his wings tucking in tight. What did you wake that day in Highburn, prince of bastards? My blood went cold. What came out was not what went in. A rasping laugh as the carver laid the shard of bone on the ground beside him. How lovely she is. Who was a fawn, yet ancient. As the sea, how she calls to you, a queen 
as my sister once was, terrible and proud, beautiful as a winter sunrise. Rise had warned me of the inmate's capacity to lie, to sell anything to get free. Nesta, the bone carver murmured. Nesta. I squeezed Cassian's hand. Enough. It was enough of this teasing and taunting, but he didn't look at me. How the wind moans her name. Can you hear it too? Nesta. 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 I wasn't sure. Cassian was breathing. What did she do? Drowning in the ageless dark. What did she take? It was the bite in the last word that snapped my tether of restraint. If you wish to find out, perhaps you should stop talking long enough for us to explain. My voice seemed to shake Cassian free of whatever trance he'd been in. His breathing surged, tight and fast, and he scanned my face. Apology in his eyes. The carver chuckled. I so rarely get company. Forgive me for wanting to make idle talk. He crossed an ankle over a foot. And why have you sought my services? We attain the Book of Breathings, I said casually. There are interesting spells inside. Codes within codes within codes. Someone we know cracked most of them. She's still looking for others. Spells that could send someone like her home. Others like her too. The carver's eyes, the carver's violet eyes flared, bright as flame. I'm listening. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 22. Ooh. Okay, finally. Ooh, that got me good. I know I've been talking some smack about, you know, it being a little bland so far in the lead up, but okay, okay, we're getting a little somewhere. We're getting a little somewhere, Sarah. You getting us? You getting us? I see you. Oh man, that bone carver. I don't remember what my original voice was was his uh was of his. I apologize if it's uh fairly different. Uh the one one thing I've learned trying to voice like multiple voices in a book is even if I write down what I think they sound like, my voice still has to translate back into okay, what did I mean by writing this? <laughs> So hopefully it's close enough, but I kind of like where I'm going with that for now. But, you know, people change their voice over time. That's how it works, you know? We sound a little different every day to someone else, I'd say. Totally. Don't take, don't take my word for it, though, you know? <laughs> Y'all, okay, okay, I'm getting too distracted. Y'all stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and we'll see you in the next chapter.